Hello everyone. I decided to make a quick walkthrough video here uh, to augment the uh, particle collision work we were doing in the uh, particle simulation class at Lesley University. So uh, what I have here are just, I have a, basically I use the shelf emitter from particles here. I just emitted from a location and then I created a static object, a static collider here. And when the particles fall to the ground, they, they detect the collision, and then I spawn new particles when they hit the ground. So I just want to uh, talk about how I set this up. And the method that I used here may not even be the most efficient. There's probably a hundred different ways to do this in Houdini, but that is the power of Houdini. So um, one thing I want to point out is I know in, in class we've talked about how when you're working with particles and volumes, we typically want to convert our our collision object to a VDB, a distance, if I uh, look at its parameters here, a distance VDB. And then that gets put into the, in the Autodop network, in the static object here. Uh, let me just, I just want to make sure I have enough room for everything. In the static object, I come down here and under collisions, I use volume collisions and I tell it to reference the VDB version of the box, which is the out COL for collision. And that's simply a null right after the um, convert, polygons, convert polygons to VDB. So that's what that's referencing. However, when we want to um, use the, the collision nodes we have available, in Houdini, and I have one right here, Pop Collision Detect. There's a couple of these. If we right click in the network window here, we have to be in a Dynamics network to get these. And if I, uh, let's see, if I go to Pops, oops, Pops, which is being slightly cut off, but here, here they are, the um, collision nodes. Uh, and the one that I use most of the time is the Collision Detect because it has the most options, but the other ones are just different variations of this. So in, in order to, to make this collision node work, we can't use a VDB. Uh, as you can see here, with when I put the pop collision down, it is looking for a SOP path, and I put it onto the node that's the out display node, the null, for my box object, which is just the, the box object as a polygon object. So again, just to, to review where that is, if I go back to my box object, here's the out collision null, which is where the VDB is. And then here's the out display, the one that I'm referencing from the collision detect node. So that one uses straight geometry, whereas when we're calculating um, physics-based collisions, we typically get better results by converting to VDB, uh, a, a distance VDB here, and then um, bringing that in as a static object. Now, you could also, to set up a collision with objects in the scene with your particles, you could use the uh, static object tool <clears throat> or shelf tool, which just gives us a few more nodes that basically does the same thing as this, except with um, a, a more complicated network. So as we talked about in class, we, we can just set it up this way ourselves, just doing it manually. Okay, so back to the collisions. So the trouble we were having in class was if I come in here, so again, this is just a, this is a, a fairly basic particle system. It's just uh, emitting from a location. Uh, I have the, this object, which is, uh, is being used for the physics-based collision, um, as well as being called in here in the pop collision detect um, as determining when a particle has collided with it. So, if I go to this this node here, so the, what we did in class is I was I was trying to use the pop collision detect at, to build a separate stream in itself, and I found out probably the easier way is if we run our pop collision detects in line with the pop location node. Um, and now the reason I set it up this way is because visually this makes sense to me. That's why I said this is probably not the only way to work. Um, so I, I ran it in here. So if we take a look at the pop collision detect, uh, I have it set here. Let's see. So it's it's looking for the the path to the box, the box object, uh, and I'm, I'm going to the out display node, which 
bring, which is bringing the box in here as geometry, not as a, a VDB. So that's the first thing I did. Now I did also notice that I, I had to adjust the default particle size a little bit here. Otherwise your particles will sometimes have a tendency to float off the surface here if this number is too high. Now, if it's too low, you also will miss some of the collision detection. So you need to, um, to dial this in to an acceptable number. And basically the way I do that is I just put the number in and then I get in really close to the ground here and I watch to see how the, um, the particles uh, interact with the ground, if they're floating off the ground or not. Uh, and let's see, what else have I changed in here? Um, whoops, I think I must have, did I get rid of, I removed my sob path. <laughs> Somehow I got pulled that out of there, I think. Yeah, I did, huh. I don't know how I did that. Okay, well, there it is. So <laughs> I just put it back in by uh, going back and grabbing that operator. I must have deleted it accidentally. And of course we can use deforming geometry if the object we wanted to collide with is actually being animated. My end is not, so I don't have to, um, to check that box, although it's checked by default. Um, some other things we did here, so under behavior, so here's, what I, here's, here's how the flow works. Let's talk about that first. So the way I like to set this up is I have my particles coming in. They're looking for a collision or multiple collisions. I could have five of these looking for when they collide with a particular object. In this case, that cube or uh, box. Then I put them into a group called contact. That's what this is under behavior here. We can say, hey, any, any particles that, that make this collision will be put into this group. And then under response here, we can do things like we can have these original particles die when they make the collision. They can stop, stick, slide. I'm just going to say none, which means they'll just continue doing what they do until they actually die. Um, and that's all that I changed in there. So those are the main things. We need to make sure that we're referencing geometry. We might need to adjust the default particle size to get the the collision detection to work properly. And then under behavior, um, I made a group. So then when they're in this group, I then pass the, the, the particles that are in that group over to a pop stream. So again, this is why I do it this way, because to me, I see, you know, I'm, I'm sending collisions, collision detections out to different streams. And in this case, the particles who are in the group called contact will now run into or become part of this pop stream. And right there, I have it set up as the source group, the contact group. So only those that have a collision detection will be pushed into this stream. And this is just a pop stream node. Just right click, go to pops, pops, and I have a pop stream right here. So now that they're in this group, I can then uh, have them replicate. So that's what's going on here. So I put in the pop replicate node now. And in the pop replicate node, oh, it looks like I also activated the contact group for the pop replicate node. Um, that's not necessary because the particles are being fed in through the prop, pop stream right above it. So, um, you know, that nothing needs to be in there. Uh, I think I was just had it in there from an experiment I was doing earlier. So in the pop replicate node, uh, I have the, I'm doing an impulse activation here. So it's as soon as they hit, they're going to emit 20 new particles. I also told it to kill the original particle. Uh, this is a quick way to keep that original particle from continuing to emit more replicated particles. If this isn't selected, the, the particle will continue to emit until its, its life is, is over. The original particle coming out of here, the pop location. So by doing this, I'm saying, I'm basically telling that particle, as soon as the, as soon as the um, collision happened, it's going to replicate. And when it replicates, it's going to kill the original particle. So then I just get a splash of particles out there. We can see that here. So we get a splash and then they, they fan out, but it doesn't continue to emit new particles. Again, not the only way to control that, but that's a nice easy checkbox to do that. I also have them set up uh, so they're only one second uh, in, in life with a 0.2 variation. 
And then I added some wind with amplitude to just break up their pattern a little bit here. So when that's all set up, we can see the particles come out and when they collide with the ground, they are killed off and, but right before they're killed off, they emit 20 new particles and we get that kind of splashing effect on the ground. So that is a quick way to set up some particle collision detection and then doing things with those new particles that are that are actually colliding. So again, I, I set it up just to review here. I set it up this way because it just logic flow works for me. I like to put the collision detects in line here. They each are putting their particles into a group and then the pop streams are pulling those particles in. So if I had maybe if I had a couple more collision detects here, maybe another one, I would have another pop stream over here and I'd wire that one in. And then whatever I named this group, can't be the same name, let's call it contact two. <laughs> uh, then over here, this would be contact two. So then any particles from this collision detection will be pushed into this stream and any particles that are under this collision detect will be pushed into this stream. It's sort of my way of doing kind of a roundabout, I guess you'd say if, if statement. If they're, if they're part of this collision, then go here. If they're part of this collision, then go here. And then we can give them separate characteristics depending on what, they're, what objects are colliding with. So that's the way that I set that up. Like I said, it's probably not the only way, but I thought I would share that with everybody.